Hello, Saturday. I'll start with a couple of tweets that were in my Twitter feed together. I'll read top to bottom. One guy tries to use a shoe bomb equals everyone at the airport takes their shoes off. 31 school shootings since Columbine equals no changes. Next one comes in from Australia. Um, interesting. Australia had 13 mass murders between 1981 and 96. And, or but, in the 16 years since 1996, since the gun law reforms, zero mass murders. Right, let's move on to some interesting economics. Life and death. EU car sales reached 19-year low. European Union car sales fell to 19-year low with French companies Peugeot, Citroën and Renault and Italian competitor Fiat posting the biggest drops as a recession in countries using the euro hurt demand. Hurt demand it surely did. 11-month registration in 27-nation EU fell 7.6% to 11.3 million vehicles. Uh, the US is back up to nearly 15, isn't it? The lowest figures for the period since 1993. 10% plunge in November. The FT brings us Spanish house prices suffer severe fall. Severe fall. Now this is Spanish house prices, and this has been going on for a while. Spanish house prices tumbled in the third quarter as stagnant demand and an ongoing shortage of mortgage credit accelerated the deflation of the country's housing bubble. In the week that the Spanish government's so-called bad bank vehicle designed to mop up soured real estate assets from the nationalised lenders secured its first private investment, Dara showed that Spanish house prices fell by 15.2% year on year in the third quarter. Ooh, whoops. Right, let's go on to Robert Skidelsky, who is getting all very um, high-tech, and he's got his own, um, his own blog now for doing lighter sort of blog posts. I mean, he can be found all over the place, but this is his own blog. And I'm going to read the entirety of his opening blog posting. The British government has congratulated itself on the employment figures released two days ago. 628,000 more jobs in the private sector compared to 127,000 fewer in the public sector over the past few years, very similar in its way to the United States. There is a big discussion going on as to why the total number of unemployed has fallen slightly from 8 to 7.8 that's understandable, but even while the economy has been sliding, that's been the head-scratcher. The most popular current explanation, though these explanations change from day to day, has to do with the unexpected flexibility of the British labour market, and it's been said about the US labour market as well. Real wages have fallen as money wages fail to keep pace with inflation. Yeah, don't need to go that again. This is how neoclassical economists expect full employment to be regained. However, there is a snag which Keynes pointed out. A reduction in real wages, i.e. an increase in profits, also reduces employees' spending power. So the real question is whether the confidence created by the increase in business profits offsets the effects of reduction in overall demand. It's just tidied up in one paragraph what we've been talking about all week. Two more paragraphs end the blog post. We have to take something else into account. Aggregate demand is not only being reduced by lower real wages, on the one hand, but also by the government's deficit reduction programme, on the other hand. So we have another condition. Recovery depends on confidence 
in the government's fiscal policy being sufficient to offset the reduction in spending power which fiscal austerity produces. So confidence has got to offset the two negatives. The hopes of recovery seem to me to be disturbingly over-dependent on psychological factors while ignoring the common sense view that if total demand is being reduced the their econo the econ economic slide will continue and moreover unemployment will start rising again so over to paulie krugman and two quotes from two of his uh, new york times postings this week starts off with the other from the boston fed looks at the recent deterioration of the beverage curve forget all that the apparent worsening of the trade-off between vacancies and unemployment many people have argued that this is evidence of structural unemployment you will have heard the expression if you listen to things going on of workers not having the right skills or something like that but the authors show that the worsening of the trade-off seems to apply to all skill groups, all types of work and so on, but they also found something else. This is what we're getting to. The short-term unemployment rate has fallen just as we might have expected. Now, the short-term unemployment rate is the people that have got back into a job. They're fine. It's long-term unemployment that's higher than it should be. As Brad DeLong suggests, this is very much consistent with a story in which long-term unemployment make, makes it hard to get back into employment, exactly the kind of thing we should fear, because it means that failure to address the slump is damaging the economy's long-run prospects. What they're saying is that the economy is picking up quite nicely and doing quite well in the United States in on this in this occasion for the people that lose their jobs but then can get straight back in again everything's going fine but the ones that just slip through the six months nine months and into a, over a year of unemployment do not get back into the labor market again and they're being blocked out there's a psychological barrier by those what do they call them the people that employ people, uh, human relations or something, whatever they call them, they see that you've been out of work for nine months, a year, 18 months. You're just put to the bottom of the list and somebody that's only been out of work for three weeks will go to the top of the list. Those long-term unemployed, you can say it's their fault, might be, might not be, but they are getting left behind. And nine months turns to 18 months, which turns to three years, and then they're just completely dropped out. They're losing skills and the will to live. What Paulie's saying and what Robert Skidelsky would say is those are the people that the government needs to sweep up and somehow keep employed and keep their brains working so when the private sector is ticking up again, they are there to be employed like the other short-term employ um, employment people. Um, so nobody gets left behind because those people that are left behind are just um, a gangrenous sore on the economy. There's just nothing that can be done with them except just give them money to keep them off the streets. They need to be swept back up into the labour pool. Okay, we'll finish with another paragraph from another um, Krugman article this week. Why is this happening? Again, it was a different thing. The general overall malaise of things as best i can tell there are two plausible explanations both of which could be true to some extent one is that technology has taken a turn that places labor at a disadvantage taken a turn as in a quantum sort of jumpified thing where it's more than just buggy whips now something that we've discussed this week the other is that we're looking at the effects of a sharp increase in monopoly power. Think of these two stories as emphasising robots on one side and rubber barons on another. And that kind of ends the week, uh, summing up what we've discussed all week and Krugman's onto it and uh, we're onto it or 
because I'm on to Krugman. He's not all stupid. And we'll finish there. It's been a good week. Bye.